that will in, in turn lead your lordships to testing the 1920 but if act. you strike down the 20 act then the very status of the university uh, evaporates no 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 Malad. strike down the 20 act in the context of article 30. we are deciding only a limited question what is meant by the term established and administered in article 30. we are not dealing with what is the effect if an institution is declared to be a minority institution because that's been a matter of a lot of debate probably they wanting us to do it uh, go into that but Please, Malaz, then i i, I I'm also want i'm giving only a background Malaz. brush to tell your lordships why and how your lordships should look at this matter well this is first of all a pre-constitutional law the 1920 act is a pre-constitutional law pre-constitutional laws have to be tested under article 13 if they are inconsistent with any fundamental right, they can be struck down. Article 30 is a right, fundamental right given to, given to minorities. If your lordships looks at the 1920 Act, I'll come to that later, and comes to the conclusion that the act itself is ultra virus article 30. Your Lord, she can strike it. But has there been a challenge to the validity of the act itself? No, no. the act says it can be altered also under 372. The act itself but can be altered. In the proceedings before the... Uh... No, no, if today, Manas, today your lordships are testing the validity of 1920. But no, where is that? Is there a challenge to the validity Malaz, of the act? When, when Basha is already, I'll come to that. Malaz, just let, let me, when Basha itself is the subject matter of reference, then you'll have to decide whether Basha is wrongly, rightly decided or wrongly decided. That will in, in turn lead your lordships to testing the 1920 but if act. But you strike down the 20 act, then the very status of the university uh, evaporates. No, 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 Malaz, strike down the 20 act in the context of Article 30. That it violates my right under 30. And that takes your lordships to the reference of Basha. Well, uh, what's your argument? Well, my argument is please look at it as a pre Constitution Act. Correct. And in the light of that, test that act in the context of our constitutional right under Article 30. You may come to the conclusion that the tests laid down in terms of Article 30, because well, the Basha judgment came in 1968. No, as much water has flown down the Ganges after 1968. But nobody By, challenged the act, Mr. Malaz, I am not, I'm not staying. Can we deal with the validity of the act? Malaz, the please, please, I am just at the moment, Malaz, only look, asking your lordships to look at it as a pre-constitutional law. We'll come to the argument as to how it can be challenged, how it can't be now, challenged. All of you are appearing for Aligarh Muslim. I am appearing, Malaz, for the Old Boys Association. Old Boys And Mr. Uh, Dr. Dabar was for, for AMU yeah. and Chadan. Right, but no now, challenge to the act. How can we? No, I'm not. Well, I, I'm not challenging the act at all. Please appreciate, Malaz. I'm. I'll ask your lordship to interpret the act in terms of that's Article 30. That's of course. That's, that's, that's all that I'm wanting your lordship. No difficulty there. Yes, that's that's always all. in violation of my right under 30. There's nothing more than that, Malaz. That I'm asking your lordship to. Yes. Now, Malaz, as your lordship knows, Malaz, Article 30 has been interpreted over a period of time, and when Basha came into being in 1968, Malaz. There are several judgments after Basha, which give your lordships as to what the true meaning of Article 30 is. Right, Malaz? Those judicial dicta will have to be taken into account to interpret whether Basha was rightly decided or wrongly decided. Forget, Malaz, the amendments made. I'm not concerned with that. Now, Malaz, if your lordship looks at the constitution in the broadest sense, Malaz, what happens is, Malaz, there are all kinds of minorities. There are Hindu minorities, there are Muslim minorities, 
But when it comes to Christian minorities, when it can, came to Malas scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, a special, I'm talking about now education, a special provision for reservation for them was made Malas in the constitution itself. Then came the amendment to Article 15 Malas, and that reservation then was extended to the backward community. So you have reservations in educational institutions for scheduled class, for scheduled tribes, for backward communities. No reservation could have been given to the Muslim community or to the Christian community or to the Sikh community because it would be violative of 15 and 14 and 16. So in the context of the framework of the constitution, there was no other way to give an opportunity to those left out Oh, to Mr. allow for to allow for Mr. education. So, oh, Mr. Sibyl, I I don't think the the reference is on this issue. I'm not, not. Look, Article 30 has its various connotations. There is impact of Article 30, which is entirely different from what we are deciding today. We are deciding only a limited question: What is meant by the term established and administered in Article 30? We are not dealing with what is the effect if an institution is declared to be a minority institution, because that's been a matter of a lot of debate. Probably they wanting us to do it, uh, go into that. But please, Malaz, then, I, I, I'm, I'm also wanting. I'm giving only a background, Malaz. I'm not. I, this is not. Please appreciate. I'm wanting us to go into that question. No, no, no. I'm just giving a background as to why 30 came into being, Malaz. What that's, you're saying is that. The beneficial provisions which were carved out for, say, these SCs, STs, and the socially and educationally backward classes could not have been given to the minorities because they would have been the bar of 15 one. That's right. And no discrimination on grounds. That's of a, there, there is a so rationale. Yeah, so what was the special provision which was crafted by the constitution makers? Article 30. That's right. That's why Article 30 has been called, in, in a sense, an article of faith. That's correct. That's we must put ourselves back in 1949, 1950. Right. Exactly. And the idea was to give a sense of confidence to the religious and linguistic minorities. That's right. That they would be safe within the confines. That's, it is in this security. context that Article 30 is, 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 is in the constitution. I'm just giving you a lot of just the broad constitutional framework. So when this happened, Malaz, look back. At, at the time of 19, 1950, when we became a republic, Malaj, where, were the, where, where were these higher educational institutions? There were none. In fact, Malaj, the only five or six higher educational institutions were University of Calcutta, University of Allahabad, University of Lahore, University of Bombay, Bombay. and University of uh, 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 Calcutta and uh, Madras. That's all. In fact, you know, Mr. Sibyl, Bombay University had jurisdiction over present-day Karnataka, yes. Maharashtra, yes. Gujarat, and if I'm not mistaken, parts of Sindh as well. Correct. But therefore, Malad, there were no, there were hardly any institutions of higher education. And Malad, if your lordships are aware, and I'm sure your lordships are, the only 14% of India was educated. 14% of 300 million people. There were no institutions. So when these five institutions, Malaj, actually, they were set up after 1857. And Malaj, it was set up on the basis of the London University. Because unless you had a university, Malaj, you couldn't get a job unless you had a degree. So when these universities were set up, Malaj, then the British thought that we must regulate them also because they must have standards. This is all of the background to look at 30 later, Malaj. I'm just giving you a lot of background. Nothing more than that. 